Sarah Chiu, the program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Thank you for watching. Tonight I am going to continue what I couldn't finish last week. It's about uh, the duo, the twin, and the letter M, or the sound um, Ma, okay? So uh, I'm going to start right away because if, uh, I never have enough time, okay? So here it is. Again, this is the Basket Starfish. And then I believe that uh, we all started from one single core uh, back in the history of time. And then we do not belong to separate tree family because every one of us is just a branch from the same organism. Uh, believing in uh, each of us as a different tree at a different time only usher in human hierarchy. So I think this view needs to be changed. I'm presenting to you from a female Asian uh, point of view. And on top of that is the traveler's point of view because I travel from place to place you know for the last 30 years and um, I found that you know there's a lot of intrigue relationship between all languages it's just like this pile of thread you know because if you uh, uh, look closer to the basket starfish uh, the branches also intertwine with each other exactly like the thread themselves I remember when I was a child I loved to uh, this entangle piles of threads and I was always good at it uh, uh, I couldn't believe that after so many years I am still like chasing after the threads so uh, here I am I uh, share with you what I found in the last 20 something years okay uh, last week I was uh, talking about uh, the name James and then uh, its relationship with the biblical name Jacob because when you uh, look at the name James in the dictionary they will give you an uh, explanation saying the hill holder the supplanter uh, actually this explanation actually belonged to only one one Jacob okay and then as time went by you know the, the name James actually took over because the name James as I said uh, with the uh, previous episode that the M sound uh, A M M sound or the, the letter M or the M A M A sound is always since the very beginning of time for some reason linked to something that has a dual okay so uh, because James actually if you remember it well uh, Jacob has uh, a twin brother Esau right so as time went by because he supplanted the brother and then all you know about is Jacob the story of Jacob and of course it become the uh, beginning of also uh, the Christianity too so uh, most of the attention only uh, pay to Jacob who later named Israel so um, we forgot that he's uh, actually the the younger brother of a twin okay so if you look at the um, Hebrew word uh, Jacob it will be called it will be Yaakov Yaakov is actually a conjugation of a verb you know to catch the hill from the back okay so Kof is actually the hill and then, or you can write it this way, as I said again, again, the I and Y and the J keep interchange with each other without any problem since ancient time. Okay, so Jacob actually become the Jacob that you know. But interestingly, in the ancient Chinese dictionary, the sound cup is actually means uh, to reach from behind to uh, catch up with someone and then later on it became the meaning of to see someone to grab someone or to catch someone okay but as you can see from the picture it's approaching someone from behind look at the sound too so this is where the uh, interesting relationship is with this Jacob you know to to catch from behind become Jacob you remember that he has a brother called Esau okay so this is the um, or Esau however you pronounce it this is the twin and um, interestingly, if I uh, supplement that plus sign with an ancient Sumerian writing, mass is in mass actually in um, Sumerian it really means twins. Okay, as I said in the Chinese writing too, ma uh, as you can see right here is two 
uh, uh, babies to child put together has the sound of ma in the colloquial way we still uh, use it to mean a twin or we use it as a conjunction or use it uh, uh, to mean to go with someone together with or sometimes it also means some marriage right so um, now I circle around this word you will see that a lot of English words also have that radical part I will call them radical because it came down from the very very ancient time uh, it uh, actually stayed uh, in English the same way like in marriage the ma sound the ma part or tim the m right here or this word same because you can see two parts of the same and then also the simulate the im as I said the im also used by uh, all the semantic languages in ancient time to mean a double a duo which gradually move on to plural as uh, human uh, I mean humanity grow and, and and more and more fertilize you know the the duo gradually become a plural tool okay so simulate to or, or you when you think of the simulation in time it of course is simultaneously when you and the time goes along side by side it's always have a very very deep subtle meaning and then uh, the sum too because the um part is also very very important you you put things together to put make a sum and then of course the multiply uh, when People, when human beings begin to uh, do our uh, settle down and begin to re animal, all they care uh, was the fertility of themselves and also the fertility of the animal. And here comes all this word about multiplication, amassing something, or many, and it ended up become many. So you will see that the two meaning actually gradually become the multiplication of many, the mass uh, uh, of things or the massing of wealth okay so um, it's very interesting the more I look into the languages the more I see the human development go side by side along with it okay so the next slide let's look at this next slide and then uh, this week I will look at the duo the twin and the couple as I said is the idea of the two and um, you will see that is a lot about our fertility plus you know the the wealth okay again this sign right there as I said the Sumerian already use it you know pronounce it as mask and if you are a Spanish speaker you will know that you know the plus sign in Spanish actually pronounced as mask as well okay so um, I show you this you know the uh, archaeologist or the um, scholars will call this master of animals it happened everywhere all over the ancient world and I show you a, a writing of the ancient Chinese it has the song of man okay as you can see it actually embedded a lot of the ancient wishes in there and gradually it become the twin of course you know you what from one thing you want to double it to multiply it okay this uh, gradually become the Chinese meaning of twin two but the song uh, man is still stay there and then the other uh, writing for the Chinese will be the Tai uh, in Cantonese sang or the D in um, Mandarin and this is really the deity that uh, in the West okay the same sound the same meaning and as you can see it is actually uh, from my point of view is already a ligature of uh, two different signs and um, it is all about the joining of two things together and after you join just like the copulation of a male and a female you begin to have the idea of the split and then after uh, endless splitting you will end up with the idea of multiplication okay so um, this is where uh, it, it was you can see the Sumerian has this marsh but if you're Spanish you can take it as, as a plus sign in mathematics and it pronounces mars in Spanish and then it uh, uh, it means to add up something as you can see you know you can add up something or divide something you can actually get the meaning from the same symbol right there and Sumerian also have this sign 
and and for them you know it's the head the male head and then the f first and foremost and and actually become this sign right there which carry the sun dingy dingy actually for them is also means god so this thing and then the die in uh in cantonese and also the deity in the western language you will see that there's a very very coherent system uh, of uh, pronunciation in all the old languages and if you look at it also as a mathematic sign you can also say it as a the times how many just like a multiplication sign so this m or math sign is very consistent even in english so you will see that the english component is always very very clear if you know how to read them okay so um again the train uh, i have found you know all these years they uh, mostly uh, deal with the d sound or the duo or the two the t sound and d and t is actually a uh, shifting of the vowel and then the b and p the by also the pair and the b and p sound too and then the z sound and a couple of other but uh, this time as i said i'm dealing with the m the m sound and also um the 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 ma sound okay so i show you already last week but i want to remind you the m in in all this uh, just interchanging of the consonants and also the vowels they are all used being used you know in the ancient languages as a double meaning okay and uh, in hebrew you will also find the modern hebrew using the odd od or ot also as a um, uh, plural or duo or plural meaning okay because all these were being used as a prefix or suffix fixes in in many different languages and all they want to show was a duo which later become a plural so this is the human chase for multiplication and human chase for wealth and and fertility okay and again we are dealing with the ma sound and from very early on anything to do with two even the pair of eyes or the breast itself and you will see that it always has to do with the m m or men sound okay the m and uh, this is ancient egyptian hieroglyph the minet what however they they used to pronounce it but you will know that when you draw one breast it at least means two in the human body and of course it means a lot more uh, when it's a human uh, with the animal body okay and then the other one is a me sound you know in the ancient uh, egyptian hieroglyph and you will see that for them this is a male jar and and interestingly you see the double equal sign right there which you will see later again and again even in chinese and then this seems to be an ancient idea of putting it uh, to subtly mean uh, double okay so the uh, from out of all these words from the mill of course you have mammal because you know you have two mama mama uh, in different languages is the breast and also um the, of course it came the milk uh, word and uh, from this also you have the moeti. Moeti is a very seldom used word in English, but uh, I can tell you the uh, definition of it is each of two parts into which a thing is or can be divided. So you will see that um, when you see one thing, a half of it is also called a moeti, okay? And then uh, of course it become or many when it become a plural too. So this half and, and the whole thing or become the two, sometimes the idea is very uh, interestingly, they interchange with each other. So let me go on to the next one. And if I am going too fast, please uh, rewatch it in YouTube, type in the program name, you can rewatch it, okay? And then again, I go back to the Jacob because I want you to see all this uh, development. The Greek will have this ya Jacob, Jacob, why this? And of course later, you know, God changed his name according to the bible to israel so this name wasn't used and 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 in the greek bible because of its christianity they do not necessarily want to follow a jewish name so um most of the name will become yakovos so you will see that this is actually become the half brother of jesus whose name is became james you know in the modern bible so jacob is only reserved for the only one single 
Bible Jacob, which was later changed to Israel. Okay, so uh, the same name, you know, become the lay Latin Yakomus, and you will see that um, for them, this is a person, but they have a. The, uh, word called uh, Germanus. Germanus is definitely the twin, as you see the sky, the, the, the star, the horoscope of Germani, okay? So uh, you see the G letter, but it's pronounced with the soft G as a J, okay? So the Sanskrit will have the word Yama, Yama as a couple or a pair, and of course the G and J as uh, the G and Y also interchange very obviously in, in Greek two and it will become uh, the James, okay? So you will see right here, I can show you the, to the triangle of the G, Y, and J. They always interchange, you know? Either you can find it here or you can find it somewhere else. It's very interesting. And I will show you the pictorial form. The Sumerian have the marsh as the train, and then the Chinese have all this, you know, become the writing of the train, and then the sun remain here as man. But then it jumped, you know, from here to there and become the Ma. The Ma also means the twin. And then I will show you the normal twin in the, uh, from the Semitic world jump to the uh, Greek world, okay? In the ancient uh, Aramaic, this is the Tauma. This is uh, definitely a twin, okay? Tauma. And then the, uh, become the, uh, the old Hebrew, the Taom and then Taom, also a twin, and then become the uh, Arabic Tao, Taom, Tawam, you should say Tawam, okay? So you will see that it change, 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 but this Ma, Om, Um, always is staying in there. And then of course from there Tawam, it become Tomas in Greek. And from Tomas, you can still barely hear the Tomas and the Tom sound. When you say Tom, it's actually echoing the uh, Hebrew pronunciation right there. Only you think you are speaking in English, but a lot of these words that actually pass on from generation to generation across different culture to this very day, okay? Only we modern men put a limit to our language, but the sound actually cross over from language to language, from Tom to Tom, from, from Tom to Mars to Tom, okay? So, of course, you know, from that you also have the twin or you have the two, and of course the team two, the team of two to begin with, and then if you speak Speak Spanish, I will help you pick out all this sound, the tambien, the tambien, and also at the mask, you know, echo back to the Sumerian. It also means the also and to. And of course, when you say me too, you know, it means, you know, at least you and me, at least two, num the number two. Okay, and also siempre, and this is always, you know, you and the time traveling side by side together. There's always two elements, except that it's uh, something very, very subtle. You're talking about time traveling along with you as a person, okay? So also ambos means two also. So this meaning is always and both, you know, also always has a subtle meaning of two or a twin or a duo, okay? So... This comes a very complicated uh, slide right here. I will uh, have to slow down a little bit. Look at this. This is the Chinese writing. All this line, I will, most of this line, I will show you the Chinese writing, okay? Man is uh, the very early, you know, uh, writing to mean the twin, the two, okay? And then the ma is a later writing, um, and and we actually uh, took away the, uh, take away the end part sound, and just ma, ma, be also become you know two and also together or with okay and then uh, the Chinese also have a hand you know grabbing two stock and has the hard ji sang gim you will see uh, this im uh, uh, suffix also means uh, uh, exactly means the uh, gamos in Greek okay in the English is gami okay so this means marriage and also together with okay it's very easy to understand when you see the picture there and then the uh, Sumerian has this marsh. Marsh has the meaning of a twin. Look at this, they are identical. Or the um, Sumerian also have a very uh, abstract writing like this, man, man or man, however they used to pro 
pronounce it. It also means a tool, a partner, or a, a spouse, okay? So you will see that all these have the same sound or the same meaning. It depends on whether you mean the mate is uh, your brother, the mate as a spouse. It really depends on what kind of company you are talking about, okay? So, of course, come to the modern languages. You say, you know, actually nothing is modern. As I, I said, this amica, ami, and then the amigo. All these are the Latino languages like the French, Italian, all means friends, okay? So also you can understand it as friend because in the old days, brothers are also friends, okay? So even the Hindi and languages, Hindu languages, this is Sanskrit and Hindi. Uh, Mitre is also a friend. Look at this part, the me is very important. And of course, in English, you can refer it to mate. And then uh, to digress a little bit, I will show you the B and the P uh, sound, uh, sound, okay? So the Bing here is actually a Chinese writing. Bing for us means side by side, okay? You can definitely see two person hand in hand right there. Or we use exactly like the meal jar in the ancient Egyptian. Look at this double sign linking the two together as an equal sign. We, we have a sound of Bing. Actually, we have a number of sounds, you know, different tones. You can say Bing or Pun or, or, or or whatever depending on the situation it really means standing side by side or a company okay so uh, you go back to the Sumerian, uh, Sumerian uh, cuneiform, you see the one thing divided into two parts, they have the sound of bar. Bar also means to uh, half, cutting things into half, or they have two uh, things like this, you know, the exactly the same sign, okay, the equal sign like this, or they have one like this, um, the sounds par right there, it means a branch, of course, you know, when you branch out from something means you are also part of it, and then and uh, here you have to pay attention to the P and the B and the F and the V interchange. That's why the whole world's language sometimes when you say a pair of something, it always, if they are not using the M system, they will be using the P and B, F and the V system. Of course, in English, I can uh, give you all this spouse, pair, pal, or friend. Okay, all this at least means two. Okay, so um, uh, go back to the ancient world. The B here means, you know, a uh, a pair of yoked animal right there and and of course the beer uh, even in Turkish now when you say beer it actually means one by the uh, meaning one you actually means one pair not really a singular but one pair means actually two okay so this is the same way right there a pair of yoked animal and of course you know the uh, Egyptian hieroglyph have the foot as the beer you have the by right there and also the P sound right there and of course you all of these things you at least have a pair of them okay so um, the Egyptian also have this very abstract sign you know meaning the two or the dual look at the Chinese Chinese has the same thing and this of course you know we mean two or, or, or if we slant it a little bit it gradually become other than two it also means plural okay so you look at the ancient world how can things be so identical if we did not share a, a common root, okay? Or we, if we did not communicate with each other. So our communication is actually everywhere uh, to be seen on our writing, okay? So you have the word by or you have the word, uh, why is it? You also have the dual and the D also. And I will show you also. Uh, the Sumerian have a pair of yoke animal as uh, this B. But the Chinese have this, uh, I show you many weeks ago, you know, the A symbol right there is actually an unseen energy. Sometimes it represents the bull, the animal. A pair of animal right there, we actually have a word of a sound, do. Yeah, this is Cantonese, okay? Do, it actually means double. And, and gradually it becomes a lot, okay? So look at this. How can the Chinese say to, uh, reading it as to, and when in the West you mean to, like this, if we did not come from the same core, okay? So 
uh, later on, these two things we actually jam them together in writing, and it acquired the sound of yo right there. Look at this. You have to uh, to look at this very interesting thing. Now, what you have to be in, have in your mind is the word yok, okay? The yok and the yok is really mean together because this is one pair of yok animal too. But in the Chinese, we use in a very light sense. We we use it to mean to nourish the nourish something to bring up something, okay? When you tied up something. But the sang also stayed in our Chinese writing of friends. Look at this, we bind two hands together, or sometimes, you know, we can just write it like that, but we do use this binding sign. The sang is yao, the yok and the yao. Actually, uh, you can hear the similarity. For us, it actually means friends, and the yuch in uh, Sanskrit, it really means all kinds of pairs. It means pairing, means union, it means, you know, friends, it means a couple. And then, uh, look at this, this has a uh, relationship. And of course, you have the duo in Greek, and then the duo in Latin, and then, of course, the duo. All this means two, okay? The double, and then the Chinese also have this, you know, become uh, a pair, the doi right here. And then the doi have the equivalent in, in Italian, the due, and then also the Sanskrit as due, and then uh, the Sanskrit also have dasa, but here it begins to have a darker meaning because it begins to mean slaves. Uh, in ancient time, when you pair people up, you know, they always have to work side by side because a lot of the hard work you cannot send one person to do. They always have to do people in pairs, okay, to send people in pairs. The doulos in uh, Greek as slaves, and then, but the dusa back in the Sumerian, it simply means friends, but there are all kinds of different friends. Friend. You have duet, and then you have dost in Persian, really means friend. The dost in all the in, uh, the Middle East, you know, it either means friend or means friendship or means two. Look at all the relationship right there, either friends or they actually means, you know, uh, friend, uh, 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 slaves, okay? The yama in also means a pair. And then the Swedish, look at this, the yama and yamo means spouse right there. And then there, of course, back to the... Uh, the Western world, it means, you know, a pair, means a pair, also means a pair. I will stop right there because time is running out. And I hope uh, you can follow me. Please uh, rewatch it on YouTube. Um, I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.